Hello students, welcome to Shree Classes. Let us continue with lecture number 6, Life Processes. And this is the last life process, excretion. There are two parts in this one, excretion in human beings and excretion in plants. Let us discuss about the same. Here, let us define what exactly is excretion. See, in our body, lot of metabolic activities will be going on. So, they will be producing waste substances. So, the removal of the waste materials from the body which are produced during metabolic activities is called excretion. So, how do you define here? The biological processes involved in removal of harmful nitrogenous waste materials produced during metabolic activities from the body of an organism is called excretion which is a good definition. That means removal of the nitrogenous waste materials from the body is called excretion basically in simple terms. Uh, if we compare the unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms, just see here. Unicellular organisms, excretion takes place from simple diffusion process. Even the ingestion of the food, nutrition also, uh, you know, it is by a simple diffusion process. Whereas, uh, similar to that uh, uh, ingestion, the excretion also is by simple diffusion process, which we find in amoeba and all. Uh, and uh, But in complex multicellular organisms, Specific organ systems are involved in removal of uh, the waste materials from the body and those uh, organ systems are called excretory system. So organ systems are called excretory systems. So what I mean by that is complex multicellular organisms involve excretory systems for removal of the waste materials from the body. Okay, fine. Let's go to the next slide now. Yeah. Uh, we will study human excretory system first and uh, what are the components of the human excretory system. You can see here the diagram, this diagram is taken from your textbook. This is an excretory system and which consists of a pair of kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder and urethra. Let us understand where are these components located. Here you can see these two are kidneys basically these are reddish in color and bean shaped they are located uh, in the abdominal cavity in the abdomen on either side of the backbone and uh, here you can see this is the right one this is the left one left kidney is slightly above the right one that is only due to positioning uh, aspect considering the positioning the uh, left kidney is slightly above the right kidney but functionally there is uh, both kidneys are same basically there is no difference between the functions of both the kidneys so uh, what are the components of the excretory system kidneys ureters are the tubes this is a bladder and this is urethra once again kidneys ureters the tubes basically and this is the bladder urinary bladder and this is urethra the opening through which the urine is discharged apart from this you have a very important thing here see this reddish main tube this uh, this uh, reddish main tube it is called iota and uh, slightly bluish here this one is called vena cava the blood comes from iota the blood is supplied from iota to the kidneys for purification purpose and after the purification the blood bath goes back to the vena cava and uh, reaches the mainstream now from the aorta to the kidney small tubules are there for both the kidneys the small tubules are called renal arteries from the kidney to this vena cava which is uh, here uh, somewhere I have written here this bigger tube yeah, vena cava from kidneys to vena cava again there is a, a connection by small tubules kidney to vena cava the connection is by means of small tubules tubes you can say these are renal veins so each kidney is connected to aorta by means of smaller tubes which are called renal arteries through which the blood enters into the kidney and from the kidney after the purification process blood enters into vena cava through small tubules 
which are called renal veins so renal artery renal artery bluish renal vein bluish color tube renal vein these are the main components of the human excretory system okay let's go to the next slide now here also the parts have been uh, this uh, diagram is taken from uh, uh, the other book here you can see clearly uh, the same parts uh, which we'll see that once again as i said this uh, reddish tube this is main aorta from this aorta blood is taken to both the kidneys by small tubes called renal arteries after filtration the blood flows to the vena cava through small tubes called renal veins so reddish tube to the kidneys renal arteries and from kidneys to the bluish tube vena cava by means of renal veins so you have understood the components here aorta vena cava renal tube renal tube supplies the blood renal arteries renal tube is renal arteries here also renal arteries supplies the blood to the kidney and renal veins which join this vena cava from kidney the blood flows from kidney to renal uh, this vena cava via renal veins i hope you have understood the difference between renal arteries renal veins aorta vena cava you must understand these components very clearly okay fine apart from that the small tubes are there which are ureters the urine is produced to the kidney that flows to the urinary bladder through these tubes which is a muscular in nature called ureters here you have a urinary bladder which acts as a storage reservoir and uh, once the uh, urinary bladder is filled up the pressure is created and uh, the urine is discharged through another opening called urethra these are the main components now here uh, this indicates the section of a kidney important three parts you should know here the three parts are here renal pelvis the middle portion of the kidney and here you can see these are petals like a petal like structures which are called pyramids basically these pyramids are nothing but medulla and the outer portion is called cortex you understand and here you can see uh, renal artery through which the blood enters renal veins through which the blood goes out of the kidney okay fine these are the main components i think you have understood let us uh, try to understand the function now yeah here uh, the four components kidneys ureters urinary bladder and urethra what are these structures let us uh, uh, understand a little bit about these things kidneys basically which uh, the diagram is shown here and also the section is shown these are bean shaped reddish brown located in the abdomen located on either side of the backbone that you know already and thing is each kidney has a large number of blood filtration units called nephrons nephrons are also called the functional units of kidneys so nephrons are the ones which filter the blood and urine urine formation takes place in the nephron how many nephrons are there when i say a large number nearly each kidney has approximately 2 millions of 2 uh, millions of nephrons the structure of the nephron is something like here which are going to study in detail but here you can see the structure of the nephron basically it is a tubular structure one end has got a cup shaped structure and another end is connected to another end is connected to the duct collecting duct so this entire assembly is called nephron it is a tubular structure one end of the nephron tube is bowman capsule and another end is connected to the collecting duct in the bowman in the bowman's capsule urine is produced and it flows through this uh, tubular region into the collecting duct the urine flows th through the tubular region into the collecting duct i hope you are able to understand so let us see here uh, there are millions of nephrons present in the kidney where is the location of these nephrons if you look at there is a small you know here you can see <coughs> see this uh, 
this is uh, the pointer basically you can say this part here it is enlarged here here you can see this nephron nephron so nephron is located in the cortex the outer portion of the kidney here the nephron is located in the cortex and these collecting ducts are located in the medulla medulla is a soft portion which is a pyramid like structure so nephron is located in the cortex and these collecting ducts urine collecting ducts are located in the, into this region these are petal like structures which are called medulla in this the collecting ducts are located nephron here in the cortex i hope you have understood the uh, location or details okay next left kidney is placed higher than the right kidney functionally there is no difference it is only the positioning which matters that's all uh, renal artery this is a renal artery brings blood into the kidney for filtration purpose and renal vein collects the filter blood and joins back the vena cava which joins the mainstream so this is a small uh, uh, details uh, some details which have been given about the kidney here okay anything is to be discussed i think the uh, picture is very clear over here the components and also the nephron how does it look like anyway we are going to study the nephron once again <coughs> fine let us go to the next part what is the next one kidney we finished ureters see here ureters or excretory tubes this tube ureters join kidneys to the bladder and through ureters urine formed in the kidney flows to the bladder is it right so these are the two muscular tubes next comes urinary bladder here this is a urinary bladder which is made up of a muscular organ it is a muscular in nature and also it is under the nervous control are you able to understand it is under the nervous control urinary bladder stores the urine until the pressure is developed and as it is under the control of the nervous system uh, the urine discharge can be regulated as per our will basically generally according to our wish urine regulation can be a uh, urine discharge can be controlled so this is what we ha have written here see urinary bladder urine is stored in the urinary bladder until the pressure of the expanded bladder leads to the urge to pass it out through urethra the bladder is muscular and is under nervous control as a result we can usually control the urge to urinate even if the pressure builds up it can be controlled and uh, based on the voluntary decision it can be discharged next is urethra here it is the opening through which the urine is discharged outside so this uh, this is about the this uh, this is what we talked about is the main components of uh, the urinary system or ex uh, excretory system kidneys ureters bladder and urethra also we studied about aorta vena cava renal arteries and renal veins is it right okay let's see what is there in the next slide let us study the structure of the nephron so this is how the nephron looks like what is nephron in this is basically from here it starts yellow colored tube which is extensively coiled coiled and then it comes and joins here it joins to the main urine collecting duct from here to here the yellow tube is called nephron it consists of here there is one cup shaped structure called bowman's capsule this is also called a double membrane bound or a double membrane walled c shaped or a cup shaped structure called bowman's capsule inside the bowman capsule you have a large network of extensive network of blood capillaries called glomeruli the singular is glomerulus and glomeruli refers to an extensive network of blood capillaries through renal artery blood comes inside in the glomerulus the filtration takes place the filtration of the blood takes place in the glomerulus and the filtrate gets collected back at the bowman's capsule and then the filtrate start going through the tubular region which is extensively coiled and it reaches the collection duct so the filtrate which is produced over here is basically urine and that is collected in the uh, collected at the urine collecting duct and then it goes 
to the urinary bladder through uh, through ureters okay now important thing here is <clears throat> the what is the initial filtrate uh, i think let, let us study what is uh, let me check whether the function is given here in this no it's only the structure so this is the structure can we go to the next slide to understand the function basically i hope you have understood about the structure here what else you would like to know this yellow tubular region is called the nephron and this is a bowman capsule bowman's capsule inside it is called glomerulus huh? and uh, this coiled tube is also called tubular region of nephron or tubular part of nephron okay renal artery which comes uh, one more thing here is this yellow tube is surrounded by these blood tubes basically which are called blood capillaries the nephron tubular region is surrounded by blood capillaries here also outside we'll see what exactly the function of that one so we have understood nephron structure what is bowman's capsule what is gl uh, glomerulus or gl uh, glomeruli which are extensive network of blood capillaries where actual filtration takes place okay let's uh, go to the next slide yeah here the function of the uh, nephron is explained how the urine formation takes place let us see here see through the renal artery blood enters into the glomerulus glomerulus is a blood capillary glomeruli refers to network of blood capillaries by means of diffusion process salts amino acids glucose and major amount of water is filtered out of the blood and it is collected as a filtrate in the bowman capsule behind here in the bowman capsule the filtrate is collected that filtrate is called initial filtrate what is that initial filtrate it contains amino acids glucose salts and uh, and major amount of water but dear students all these are required in the blood basically isn't it also it contains nitrogenous waste substances that is most important so the initial filtrate after filtration of the blood what are the contents once again i am highlighting that nitrogenous waste materials amino acids salts glucose and major amount of water other than uh, nitrogenous waste materials all these salts amino acids glucose and uh, major part of the water is required back into the blood stream is it right how it is obtained back into the blood stream therefore look at the structure very beautiful structure here see the tube that extends beyond this bowman capsule it is extensively coiled and it comes like this and enters the collecting duct can you see this reddish color here what is this reddish colored structure these are the blood capillaries the renal artery which brought the blood inside that again it is coming it is going back because it has to carry back the blood no after filtration so that blood which is coming over here is through this blood capillary reddish in color uh, the reddish colored tubes basically these reddish colored tubes which are blood capillaries are surrounding the yellowish tubes yellow tubes contain nitrogenous waste materials amino acids glucose and a major amount of water from the tube to these blood capillaries selective reabsorption takes place meaning amino acids salts glucose and major content of the water is absorbed back by the blood capillaries from the tubular part of the nephron leaving aside nitrogenous nitrogenous waste materials meaning by what process it is by diffusion process what is diffusion movement of substances 
from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. So here the blood which is coming out of the Bowman capsule is having lesser concentration of salts, amino acids, glucose and water because all those are filtered at the glomerulus and the filtrate is taken by the Bowman's capsule. So these materials, what are those materials? Salts, amino acids, glucose and water are reabsorbed by a process of diffusion into the main blood capillaries into the uh, by the main blood capillaries how this is uh, uh, able to reabsorb because both are in, in touch with each other here the red blood capillaries and this yellow tube it is in touch with each other and therefore by diffusion the movement of substances takes place across uh, the blood vessels and the tubes in the front tube basically so once the desired once the equilibrium is reached as long as the substances can move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration as long as the equilibrium is reached so once the equilibrium is reached this blood tube again contains the required quantity of glucose amino acids water etc salts etc but it will not contain nitrogenous nitrogenous waste substances or waste materials because those are retained in the uh, this yellow tube and finally whatever that is contained after the selective reabsorption whatever that is there in the tube yellow tube that goes as a urine and that is collected in the collecting duct and then it is sent to the urinary bladder so this is how the urine formation takes place and here you can see the branch of renal vein the blood which is coming from this uh, red tube to the blue tube over here this blood contains required quantity of amino acids glucose water and required quantity of salts what about nitrogenous waste materials no because selective reabsorption takes place only selected materials are sent back to the uh, the uh, tube but waste materials are as it is retained by the yellow tube which is called the tubular part of the nephron basically is it right and this is how the filtration of the blood takes place and uh, selective reabsorption is the most important process which ensures that the desired quantity uh, desired quantities of salts amino acids glucose and the water is maintained back into the bloodstream see I, will, I would like to give an example here what is the quantity of the initial filtrate nearly per day about 180 liters of filtrate will be collected by the Bowman capsule how much 180 liters of the filtrate will be collected but in the form of urine hardly one to two liters will be discharged excreted remaining about 178 liters per day is to be absorbed back by this uh, absorbed by selective reabsorption process which takes place because of the surrounding nature of this blood capillaries over the tubular part of the nephron so selective reabsorption is important and there is one paragraph i have given somewhere here uh, here see here selective reabsorption some substances in the initial filtrate such as glucose amino acids salts and major amount of water are selectively reabsorbed as the urine flows along the tube that's okay One, uh, let me check here the amount of uh, it is uh, important this paragraph please uh, concentrate on this the amount of water reabsorbed are able to understand the amount of water reabsorbed by this blood capillary from the yellow tube depends upon how much excess water is there in our body and on how much of dissolved waste is there to be excreted so the amount of water to be reabsorbed depends upon the quantity of water present in our body how much of water is there in our body and uh, what is the quantity of dissolved waste that is to be excreted these two factors govern the amount of selective reabsorption in general we can say so finally the urine collected in the urine uh, collected in the collecting duct 
these collecting ducts are present in the medulla and from the medulla all these collecting ducts open into ureters and through ureters urine is discharged into the urinary bladder once the urinary bladder fills up the pressure is developed and it is a muscular organ at our will one would be able to discharge the urine so this is how the urine formation and discharge takes place i hope you have understood very clearly the formation of urine which is basically in two steps that is one is the filtration and second is selective reabsorption okay uh, these points i hope you should note down so let's go to the next slide let me check what is there yeah well, well, generally this question comes what are the functions of kidney uh, major three functions removes nitrogenous waste materials such as urea and uric acid and also some harmful salts or excess salts it is better to say excess salts it also regulates osmotic pressure and water balance of the blood it also regulate osmotic pressure and water balance of the blood water balance means you know uh, if excess water is removed out then water is main important ingredient for the functioning of the body so it has to maintain the kidneys will maintain the water balance and also the osmotic pressure the required pressure for the flow of blood and all regulates ph control of the ph of the blood also it also controls the ph these are the three main important functions of uh, kidney now let us see next yeah something i am talking about uh, artificial kidney over here this is given in uh, more to know in your textbook and uh, which is important how it is done i'll just try to explain here <coughs> this is the system of uh, this is an artificial kidney and uh, this artificial kidney uses you can see here red color tubes these are the tubes on which selectively permeable membrane is placed and yellow color yellow color which you see over here that is nothing but it is called dialyzing solution or a dialyzing fluid and uh, what else this is the simple structure uh, from the human body the blood is pumped by means of a pump into these tubes what are these tubes tubing made of selectively permeable membrane these tubes are made up of selectively permeable membrane now once the blood comes into and passes through these tubes and goes back what happens is the tubes are surrounded by dialyzing solution the dialyzing solution uh, what it, what it is basically blood is blood consists of nitrogenous waste materials whereas dialyzing solution dialyzing solution does not contain those materials in that case by diffusion process the waste substances enter from the red tubes into the dialyzing dialyzing solution which is shown by white uh, the yellow color so the transfer of waste substances takes place from these red tubes to the yellow chamber here by means of diffusion process thing is the yellow fluid dialyzing fluid and the dialyzing fluid is maintained at the same osmotic pressure as that of the blood you understand that is also very important otherwise here you know the diffusion may not takes place properly that's one thing so once the waste materials are collected by the dialyzing fluid that is taken back into the bottle and uh, discharged this is basically urine here and uh, the pump enables the flow of blood from human body to this tube and after filtration that is after removal of the waste materials it is pumped back into the human body so the dialyzing solution the exchange of waste substances take place between the blood which is there inside the tube and the dialyzing solution which surrounds it by means of diffusion process one major difference between the actual kidney and this artificial kidney which works on the dialysis principle what is that major uh, one major difference can you see here selective reabsorption no no it is only a filtration unit this unit is called artificial kidney which is basically a filtration unit so one major uh, uh, observation the difference between the artificial kidney and the actual kidney is 
in artificial kidney selective reabsorption does not take place whereas in kidneys selective reabsorption takes place so for further details you can read your uh, textbook also or you can have a look at this uh, this thing okay please uh, note down uh, certain uh, things also here okay dear students so far whatever we studied it is pertaining to the excretory system of human beings okay let's see next we go to excretion in plants see this last paragraph which is given in your textbook is very important what are the products that are excreted by the plants it is given uh, in a nutshell in simple terms i'll just explain uh, what are the waste materials of the plant carbon dioxide oxygen resins gums yellowish leaves which wilt off all these are the waste substances that are excreted from the uh, trees the gums and resins generally they get stored in the xylem and uh, even the rubber plant from the rubber plant which we receive the rubber that also is a waste for uh, it is an excretory substance waste substance uh, for the plant resins gums will store in uh, get stored in the xylem and sometimes we observe wilting of leaves which turn initially to the yellow and wilt so wilting of leaves the leaves those leaves which wilt off also contain the waste substances so in general in a nutshell what are the waste substances for the plants oxygen co2 resins gums and waste materials stored in the wilting leaves these are the main uh, uh, substances that are to be excreted by the plants one more thing also excess water vapor yes that is also waste substance why it is so excess water based on the environmental conditions if excess water is there in the plant that needs to be excreted how it is achieved by means of transpiration process what is transpiration loss of excess water in the form of vapor through stomatal pores of the aerial parts of the plant is called uh, you know uh, transpiration so uh, the uh, water loss also is one of the excretory products of uh, plants if it is only one paragraph is given i think you can uh, understand this okay yeah from rachana sagar i have taken you can read it for your information i can read for you uh, plants produce a number of waste products during their life processes main waste products produced by plants are carbon dioxide water vapor oxygen plants get rid of of excess water by transpiration which i explained the gaseous waste of respiration and photosynthesis in plants what are the gaseous waste during respiration and photosynthesis co2 water and oxygen these are removed through stomatal pores and many plant waste products are stored in cellular vacuoles important in their vacuoles also many waste products are stored which will be removed later waste products may be stored in leaves that fall off other waste products are stored as resins and gums okay plants excrete some waste materials into the soil and around them also and some of the plant waste uh, which are useful to humans are natural rubber high here we are talking about the waste of the plant waste materials produced by the plants but which are helpful for human beings those are natural rubber gum resins and essential oils like sandalwood oil eucalyptus oil clove oil and lavender oil these are the waste materials for the plants but useful product for the uh, uh, human beings basically so this is how the excretion in plants is discussed yeah we look at uh, life process uh, uh, no this is about the light and uh, dark reactions uh, i think uh, let me try to explain a little bit uh, more on this one light reactions and dark reactions uh, first let us have a look at the chloroplast structure in the next slide yeah here you can see this chloroplast structure here the light reactions and dark re reactions has been explained see dear students what i'll do here is we'll first understand the structure light reaction dark reaction 
let us write the photosynthesis reaction and also let us write the respiration uh, reaction and compare the products and the gases released during respiration as well as photosynthesis which is very important according to me okay so let's see here structure of the chloroplast it is a double membrane bound cell organelle which contains plastids the green pigment called chlorophyll here in the chloroplast basically uh, the structure is it is filled up with some jelly like matrix called stroma where it is written here it is stroma a jelly like matrix into which you can see here the piles of flattened sacs the piles of flattened sacs what are these flattened sacs basically membrane bound flattened sacs are called thylakoids and these thylakoids thylakoids stacked together to form granum and plural is grana all these are grana and this is a granum where it is the stack of or the pile of thylakoids individual pieces are called the small individual flattened sacs are called thylakoids and they put up together to form a granum and uh, interconnection is there which is called a lamella or lamellae between the granum okay so what we need to understand is only the thylakoid granum and stroma for our uh, study purpose this is uh, enough basically uh, now after understanding this structure of the chloroplast let us go for uh, the reactions light reactions and dark reactions here the name light reaction and dark reaction first of all we should understand what is the significance of the name light reaction means the reaction which is dependent upon the light energy or dependent upon the light dark reaction means the reaction independent of light do you understand here light reaction means it takes place in the light and dark means it takes place in the dark no it is not correct both the reactions happen during the daytime only and during the photosynthesis only so the day light and dark reactions are taking place uh, almost uh, you know uh, simultaneously uh, in the uh, uh, in this uh, chloroplast during daytime only i hope you are able to understand that so what is light reaction the reaction which is dependent upon the light is called light dependent reaction or a light reaction and light independent reaction is called a dark reaction which is the kelvin cycle here let us uh, see what happens during the late time during the day time during the day time the light reaction takes place in the thylakoids in these uh, uh, in this piles here granum or you can say the thylakoid and a dark reaction takes place in the stroma which is light independent during day time the light is absorbed by the thylakoid green pigment converts the light energy into chemical energy and that chemical energy is utilized to split this water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen oxygen is released back hydrogen is carried in the form of nadph molecule and also during this process an atp energy currency atp molecule is generated so once the oxygen is a by product over here along with atp and nadph co2 is utilized and co2 is reduced to glucose here sugar are you able to understand so what is the uh, product basically in the uh, uh, what is the product of uh, photosynthesis glucose c6h12o6 how it is produced by absorbing co2 from the atmosphere water from the soil and energy from the sunlight you know the glucose is produced so water is during day time or during the light reaction i can say light energy is absorbed once again i am repeating it is absorbed by the chlorophyll and light energy is converted into chemical energy that is used to split up water molecule into oxygen molecule oxygen and hydrogen oxygen molecule is released out oxygen is released out and uh, the result uh, as a result of breakage of water you get one atp molecule and one is uh, another is nadph which is an electron carrier you got it so nadph here at return it is a nicotinamide uh, adenine dinucleotide phosphate hydrogen so whenever this h2o is uh, broken down into hydrogen and oxygen oxygen will be released in the form of nadph and 
uh, as an electron carrier NADPH molecule is produced and this NADPH ATP is utilized by CO2 and CO2 is reduced to sugar here. Now important reduction involves what kind of reaction gain of electrons no? so electrons are donated by this NADPH and uh, ATP is utilized and CO2 is reduced to sugar. So finally water CO2 and sunlight energy all this put together sugar is the output oxygen is the byproduct. So here inputs you can see what are the inputs light water CO2 output oxygen sugar oxygen is released into atmosphere and sugar is utilized by the plant for production of energy. So this sugar which is glucose basically is utilized in the night time for respiration purpose are you able to understand what is respiration oxidation of glucose there isn't it how do how do plants get energy this sugar which is produced that is utilized during respiration process what is respiration oxidation of uh, glucose to produce what co2 water and energy that energy is utilized by the plant so i would like to highlight these reaction uh, uh, these reactions on the board and try to explain to you i hope you have understood what is light reaction and dark reaction dark reaction means uh, reduction of co2 to sugar takes place in the stroma please remember and uh, light reaction takes place in the thylakoid what is that light reaction takes place in the thylakoid and dark reaction takes place in the stroma which is a jelly like substance so i hope you have understood the details okay so let me write these uh, reactions on the board and uh, thereby we'll study the photosynthesis as well as respiration okay fine <coughs> see here photosynthesis photosynthesis is accomplished by two types of reactions light reaction and dark reaction both takes place in the daytime only and the product is glucose formed how do photosynthesis takes place co2 absorbed from atmosphere water which is picked up by the xylem tissue from the roots in the presence of sunlight and in the presence of chlorophyll chloroPHY double L I think chlorophyll spelling yeah so chlorophyll uh, what is the, what are the products CO2 plus H2O in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll what are the products sugar C6 h12 o6 what is the byproduct oxygen if you balance it 6 co2 plus 6 h2 sometimes we use 12 h2o if i use 12 h2o then another 6 h2o is to be represented on the product side okay so this is a photosynthesis product so how this photosynthesis is accomplished by this is accomplished by two reactions called light reaction plus dark reaction dark reaction means both take place in the daytime only light independent light independent uh, reaction is a dark reaction light dependent is light reaction light light independent is dark reaction so light reaction i have explained splitting up of water molecule by chlorophyll isn't it and uh, dark reaction co2 is reduced to glucose i hope you have understood and oxygen is a product when uh, water is broken up by sunlight energy sunlight is converted to chemical by this chlorophyll then it will split into hydrogen and oxygen oxygen becomes the byproduct over here which is released into atmosphere so during daytime during daytime what is the gaseous exchange that takes place o2 released isn't it oxygen is the major elimination see oxygen is basically um, uh, it is a waste substance for the time being now is it not the waste substance yes therefore it is released next let us st study respiration okay photosynthesis takes place in daytime and respiration takes place in night time what is respiration oxidation of glucose is called a respiration so c6 h12 
O6 plus O2 gives you what are the products here? CO2, water and energy. Energy is produced. That energy is utilized for all cellular, uh, cellular uh, activities in the cytoplasm to produce all activities and all. So C6 H2O O6 plus O2 gives you CO2 plus water plus energy is produced. So this is this takes place during the night. Let us balance it. C6 H2O O6 plus 6 O2. Here I think this is 6 CO2. It is 6 O2. So here it is 6 O2 gives you 6 CO2 plus 6 H2. Let me check the balancing here. 6 carbon, 6 carbon, hydrogen 12, hydrogen 12, oxygen 12 plus 6, 18, 12 plus 6, 18. Correct. Here also it is balanced. So uh, during respiration, what is uh, uh, during uh, night time, what is the gas that is released? During night, which gas is released? CO2. CO2 is eliminated into atmosphere to environment. Here oxygen to environment. To atmosphere, I'll say. It is better to write atmosphere. To atmosphere. And this is to CO2 to atmosphere. Atmosphere. So during night time, CO2 released. I hope from this it is clear. From this, what we can conclude here is both photosynthesis and respiration are reverse processes. Is it not? And uh, what is the major uh, uh, elimination during daytime? Oxygen is the gas that is eliminated major majorly. And uh, what is the uh, uh, gas elimination, major elimination of the gas in the night? CO2 is the major elimination. During daytime, oxygen is the major elimination. During nighttime, CO2 is major elimination. So I hope you have understood these two processes, photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis is production of the food and respiration is utilization of the food that is uh, uh, glucose to produce energy which is by means of oxidation here it is a reduction process carbon dioxide is reduced to glucose here whereas in the respiration glucose is oxidized to co2 water and energy okay and here also you can see this energy is utilized by the plant uh, energy is utilized by plant okay this is how these two reactions takes place and uh, uh, you should not get confused with light reaction and dark reaction once again i am telling you because both takes place in, during the daytime only so light reaction means light dependent dark means light independent i hope things are very clear and uh, you should note down these reactions also uh, the photosynthesis and respiration and uh, please write it down at some corner of the notebook which is helpful for you okay let us have a look at the ppt once again now So things are, uh, uh, all these things I have discussed and uh, what else is to be noted, uh, uh, that's all here. Next let's see, yeah, I think we have completed the chapter, I have tried to explain to the maximum extent all the concepts with uh, proper diagrams which have been taken mainly from our textbook and the content is also uh, mainly from your textbook. Reading your NCRT textbooks helps you a lot and going through the in-text exercise questions as well as exemplar as well as uh, uh, exemplar questions will uh, really help you a lot i'll take you through all the questions see exemplar questions there are a lot of uh, exemplar questions uh, what i will do is uh, uh, for exemplar uh, questions i will take up the short answer type and long answer type as much as possible and the objective type questions whichever are there which are uh, uh, relatively simpler in nature i request you to go through those questions and i'll be taking up short type and uh, long type of uh, questions long answer type of questions from exemplar book so this completes your chapter and uh, in my next lecture i'll take up the questions from your textbook as well as from exemplar book thank you very much